This is Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. Jennifer? Richard? How are you? I am fabulous. Wow. Uh, you know, it's so funny. We missed you last week. And I was, and I know you, you're going to be out of town next week, right? I will be in Bonaire with my son, Jack. <laughs> he, I know. It's right next to Aruba. I had to figure that out. Um, I have friends that are there that asked us to come. And Jack's certified in scuba scuba diving. And scuba do scuba do. I just finished my test, so I'm ready to get. Oh started. my God! How many feet are you allowed to go down? Fifty? I have no idea. But oh, I okay. Yeah. The paddy, I just took the paddy course and finished it yesterday. <laughs> I think I, Wayne Dyer said something a long time ago. He says, "Take something each year." To keep your mind going, pick something new. Wow, brilliant. And so this year I am picking scuba diving. Wow, that's very and cool. Terrified. And I've swim, I have I swam with sharks at you know in Bora Bora, but terrified. But well, I can say that I've gone snorkeling and I've been to Bonaire. Um it's part <laughs> of, it's part of the ABCs. Right. Uh, Bonaire Curacao. And I got to tell you, Curacao is a little bit more dangerous than people think it is. I just want you to know that because when I got there, somebody told me, you know, like there's a like high crime, blah, blah. So just be a little careful if you go to Curacao. Bonaire. No, we're just staying at the island. Bonaire. Okay. You guys will have a blast. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. And I one trip snorkeling it was very strange because I, I was swimming out in the, you know, the clear water and I saw all these fish circled around something looked like a like a convention almost like a greek theater they were all sitting around watching something and i'm thinking what the heck could that possibly be and i swam over the circle and down straight down was a red octopus the color of this red here i mean bright red i've never seen that color in nature and he was huge he was really large He's, when he saw me, he startled. It was like he went, you know? and I thought, oh, my God. Maybe he was teaching a class. Exactly. And all the fish were, were reacting at, at the way he reacted. They all looked at me like, what are you doing here? And I was like, oh, my God, I'm in the wrong spot. You know, I better get out of here before somebody eats me. Anyway, I, you know, I'm, you're going to have a blast. That's really, really cool. Really That's fun. Exciting. I'm very excited. All right. Well, I know we only have you for a certain amount of time, darling. Um, by the way, I'll tr I will try to, if it, we're not diving that day, but I will try. I would love to do a podcast from there, from Bonin. I'll have to check the hours. Actually, I'm not in. Three LA. hours ahead. I'm not in L.A., but I'm are there. How many hours? I'm only three hours ahead. Oh, OK. I'm somewhere in California, so. Where are you, Richard Margini? In a few minutes, I'll be in the Muir Woods, looking at redwood trees, hugging them. Very nice. I'm uh, I'm up in Berkeley, or Berserkley, as it's commonly known. You know, it's funny. I lived in San Francisco back in the 70s, 77. And, uh, you know, it's when you come back to some place you used to live, you always reflect upon the journey that you've taken mm -hmm. since you left that place. And what you were looking to do and what happened, et cetera, et cetera. It's always good to sort of uh, take uh, stock of yeah. what the journey has been. As I'm fond of saying, you and I wouldn't be here if we had taken different roads. That is true. If I didn't pester you, you wouldn't have known I existed. <laughs> well, I think Luana might have had something to say about that. And speaking of Luana, uh, and for those who are tuning in for the first time, uh, there she is, Luana. Um, Lou, do you have somebody? And, and for the people turning in for the first time, I didn't finish that sentence. Luana is our friend on the flip side who last. <laughs> facilitate our conversations, a class. She's like a class moderator. She's the holder of the VIP list with the names of who right. have, have shown up in my apartment recently and asked to talk. And I have said, which is a great thing to say, don't ask me. I don't say go to Jennifer's house. I say go to f find Luana and get on the list. So is there anybody on that list, Luana, that you well, want? Well, the first one that I felt was Elvis, but then David Bowie. David Elvis Bowie. and, and I David know, Bowie. I know not the ones that visited you. So I just need to see something. Hold on. Okay, very good. I'm just writing it down. Was there a Greg? 
that visited you? Uh, a Greg. Uh, not that I'm aware okay. of. So there's something going. So I was just shown. So it's probably one of our presidents. I was just shown what was hap what the what was happening. You know, with the news right now with um the uh, the uprising correct. the January sixth uh, conference. You were correct. shown that, yeah. And so somebody want to does somebody want to talk to us uh, regarding that? Yeah. Yes and no. They just want to say that it's about time. And that. And it, what do they mean by that? What What's about time? That people are talking. It's that people have, are standing up. Like they're showing me people standing up for what happened. Like they're telling the truth about what happened. And they're also they're also saying that um, it was much worse than it appears to be. Okay. Very good. And I and just for people who, as people know, we try to remain as non-denominational. Yeah. We can. I'm not. I'm just giving what I'm. Getting. No, and I and I'm not trying. Look, I you know, um, it, I I agree. I totally agree, of course. But I also want to talk about when they raise something like that. It could be any topic. It could be climate right. change. So, you know, right. people standing up and talking about it is an invaluable uh, way to to be to do something. And they said we went over it last time, which of course I don't remember. So. <laughs> well, Louie, uh, somebody did stop by my apartment last week. I guess he didn't get on your list. I'll say that it was a he, but I felt it was a he. But this, and again, I just got Abe Lincoln. Um, <laughs> okay, Abe. Listen, Lorana is in charge of the list, and if she's going to put Abe in front of whoever it is else that needs to talk to us. Oh, I'm, that's so interesting. Okay, so do you watch? Ahead. Do you watch Bill Maher? Sometimes, yeah, sure. Sometimes I just haven't because my husband was watching. I just haven't to watch it. And there's a person that wrote about the presidents about oh, and I, there's a lot of people that write about the presidents, but this particular person wrote about gay presidents. And I'm not saying that's why I saw Abraham Lincoln, but I find it funny that they showed me Bill Maher and showed me the other thing. Well, let's not judge it. Uh, as I'm fine. And they showed me Pride Month. Okay. Pride Month. Okay, very good. Uh, we've had conversations on this topic, as you know, maybe, we don't remember, with Abe, because, you know, uh, when Abe came the first time, I asked him a bunch of questions about why, you know, he used to sleep in the same bed with his adjutant, his, like, you know, first, and it was a small bed. And so people would say, you know, well, because he wrote about it, and he was very affectionate with this guy and very close to him. And so there was that thing of like saying, you know, and so we asked him and I think his answer was specifically, oh, I would never um, like abuse an assistant in that way. That was his answer. But but then later on, when we talked to Chad Hoover and we asked him about his journey, you know, suppose oh, he says it was crazy. <laughs> and he immediately went to saying, you know, well, Abe, you didn't ask Abe about his, you know, anyway. So I don't know, but, but I, it's Pride Month. So let's just talk about that. It, I, I know that there was one president who was never married, but, you know, and he lived with his significant other guy in uh, in the Blair House across the street from the White House. It's just not spoken about. And so is there something you guys want to talk about in terms of that? Because we're bouncing around. They're just saying not to have fear, that fear is still holding a lot of people back. And what do you mean by fear? Fear of what? They're just showing, me, they're just showing me like churches behind them. Like, so they're showing me religious, like some people feel religiously that it's still wrong. Correct. Yeah. And, and people, their church tells them to feel that way. In fact, it was a, a, a bishop in Massachusetts the other day. Because one of the churches, Catholic churches, the school had raised a, a gay flag, let's say the LBGTQ flag, and a Black Lives Matter flag. And this bishop said, this school is no longer Catholic. They're going to be excommunicated from the church. And if you think about the hostility within that comment, that, that students who have expressed a genuine connection with all humanity... Hello, Jesus. And 
and judging people. And then for him to come forward and say that this is, they're no longer a Catholic school is the height of hypocrisy. It doesn't get any more no. ridiculous. I think, that. I think this is what they want to talk about. Which well, chance. okay. What, Lou? Do you want to weigh in on that? Or, or well, do you they want showed, to they in the chair? Me, they showed me, for instance, how scared I was of Jesus forever because of you know my own feelings of having fear about who I am within this world. Uh-huh. Um, and and in regards to what I do for work, for instance, you know, talking right because people tell you Satan is right on the other side of what I know. Like all I can tell you is that I'm not going to turn someone away that needs to find someone that's been missing. Or I'm not going to I'm not going to turn the FBI away. I'm not going to turn, you know, it's you know all my pro bono work that I feel people you know I'm helpful. Like my dad said that I was the good Samaritan. He quoted the Bible when, you know, if you want to look it up, he quoted the Bible on my testimonial page um, because he had to come to terms with it too. But that being said, beautiful. Um, we still are so, they're showing me just so wound up, like with what you said, like how hurtful is that, that that bishop did that, you know? To the Catholic Church, and and of course he, the bishop. Of course we, you know, it's in that thing of unconditional love. We have to allow. The bishop grew up and was told these things, and believe and believes in his heart that he's doing the right thing. Right. In his heart, and and you find these people who are equating whatever's going on in the world with like abortion. They'll suddenly slip into what about you know children who are murdered so they get into this thing of because they can't be open to other people it's impossible for them and we've talked about this this idea that god is beyond the capacity of the human brain to comprehend as one guide said in the book it's a wonderful afterlife but he said if you can open your heart to everyone and all things you can experience god it was such a profound thing to say because he wasn't saying a religious concept he wasn't saying if you can open your heart, you'll be with Jesus or with, okay. uh, or no, he just said you can experience. I mean, that's like skydiving. You can experience this thing if you open your heart. So you think, what does that mean? How do you open your heart? Well, it really means unconditional, unconditional love, compassion and love. Right. Very hard to do when a person's pointing a gun at you or robbing your car I've, I've told or you whatever or i've dated women and i've dated men i just happen to be married to a guy you know <laughs> um and well it's yeah you know i i had my own issues with it i just thought if i was going to hell then i'd want a doorman because apparently everything i was doing <laughs> was going well. you'd want a bouncer out there right, about I, who I, gets in and who gets dad, out right so my dad was actual an, a bishop for the mormon church as you are aware of And I remember him telling me, Jennifer, it's not that I don't think that people should get married that are of the same sex. He goes, for my family, for, you know, one of my sisters, I called, she was gay for a day, I called it. But (laughs) he said that she, I'm not, please don't take it the wrong way. Anybody out there, she, she just, you know, she was finding herself. And she, my dad said, I just see a really rough road of how it's looked upon and everything. I'm like, well, that's where we have to change it. You know, that's right. Like, that's right. That's right. You can't you can't drive down a new road unless you go down the rough road. I right. just remember my my one of my closest friends in high school and college. He came out of the closet when he was 35 and he called me up and he was very emotional about saying this sentence, you know, Rich, I have to tell you, I, I'm gay. And I said, because I would never let him win an argument. I said, I knew that. But I, <laughs> but my brain is like, oh, what? And, but I just couldn't. And so he said, how'd you know? I said, you iron your socks. (laughs) But I called my mom because he was the closest to really family member. He was very close to my family. And I said, look, Paul, Paul Tracy, Paul, mom, I got to tell you, Paul came out of the closet and she said, without skipping a beat, can he go back in there with a flashlight? (laughs) (laughs) So if you can find comedy in this idea that, you're the revelation of who you are, but you know, but, but even, and this is the part where it gets very complicated, but interesting where in the research that we're doing and the talking to people on the flip side 
And we talk to them about choosing their parents and choosing their lifetimes and choosing a difficult path because that's going to give them the most benefit, the most lessons. And so you find people who used to be women who choose a lifetime as a male, but they feel that thing of wanting to be to be woman or vice versa. And so that brings into question the whole sex change world. Right. It's not a liberal or a conservative issue, but it's an issue of accessing your higher self and then examining it. I completely agree. Like, I think the kids that are being born nowadays, and I've said this many times, where when I see somebody pregnant, the energy is the same. It's not very boyish or very girlish. It's the same. <laughs> That's I'm funny. Yeah, of course. Ask for colors to see the gender. Yeah. Pink, blue. That's where really? I am. Yeah. Is and, that right? Yeah. For the last probably four years, five years, it's been like that because it's the same energy. And then if you think about it, these kids come in here locked and loaded with all their lives, right? It's very challenging for a lot of them to acclimate here with their energy. And then if they're able to access that, let's just say that they were, you know, a, a female for, how many years or how many lifetimes? And then they come here and like, what? what? Well, how did I get this? <laughs> What's this? this? What's this that equipment? What, right? Yeah. What do I do with this? Yeah. No, I don't know. It's just a thought that maybe that's what they're pulling in. You know, that this. Well, it, if you start with the premise to try to open your heart to everyone, if you just start with that premise, then the person who needs a, a medical thing that you don't agree with, whether it's an abortion or whatever the medical thing is that you are having a hard time with, if you start with opening your heart to that person, then at the very least, you can now put yourself in their shoes just a little bit right. to say, I, I can't judge you, but I want to help you and and whatever, help them in any way you can. I, that's a, I know it's a complicated topic and we're, you know, we're not making light of it in any way. It's, we're not making light of it. And I've seen you know, I have friends that have family members that have gone through it. And it's, you know, it's, it's so heartbreaking what they go through on their own. You know, exactly. even, it's, even it's true. support a family. Absolutely. It's to physically change. That's that it's, it's hard. It's challenging. And I mean, also in, uh, in the book flip side, it's mentioned where, uh, you know, somebody who was, who had uh, chosen a lifetime of being gay and he had, he had lost his whole family. He was he grew up in Utah, and they had shunned him. And he came when he came out of the closet. And he had went to see a hypnotherapist and said, "Why? Why did I choose this life? This is awful. I've lost everything and everybody. I lost my job. I lost everyone." And in his hypnotherapy session, he saw that the bishop who had outed him was his guide. And the bishop was saying, "Remember, we planned this in advance. You wanted to experience." love on a different visceral level and that's why you chose this journey so we agreed to it and now you know he had fallen fallen in love and met somebody yeah see he he was showing him that all their lifetimes had been sort of in the church somewhere along the line and this was like hey let's do something different yeah a different adventure and reframe it that way it just it makes it so hard to judge other people but right. a minute before we get so, down that. Oh, go ahead. Well, this Lauren, David so, Bowie and well, Elvis. Is, so, well, go. David Bowie was for the name David. So it has hmm. to be the David that you that's in your head. Oh, okay. You think? That's funny. Um, um well, I no, I I was I had one I had a Jennifer moment. You know, the shower, and and I hear this voice in my head talking to me. And uh you know, and saying, uh, you know, Rich, I, I, I need to talk to you. And I said, well, you know, get on the list, buddy. So I, I don't want, you know, I, I don't want to bring him forward unless he wants to come. But Luana, you know his name. His first name is Bob. First name is Robert, but we'll call him Bob. Does he, does, she knows who I'm talking about and Jennifer doesn't. But does Bob want to come forward? And I don't want to invite him forward unless he does. I mean, I'm going through all the bobs that just like. Were just, in my but, head. but try not to do that. Try to just say. No, the, I'm not. I, I'm, not. I'm not trying. She to gives you a thumbs up or a show, thumbs down. I've shown Bob Newhart, and then I was shown Bob Bucher that I've worked with. I'm just laughing because all these different bobs came through. I oh, know. Yeah. A mess of bobs. Hold on. Bob's your uncle. Yes, he does want to come through. 
All right, very good. This makes it even more fun because uh, Jennifer doesn't know which Bob this is. So, Bob, would you take a seat in our chair here? Yep. Just so, so tell me, uh, was that were you bugging me in my apartment? Was that was that you? If I got it right? Yeah, but I just saw someone get off a horse too. That's interesting. Go ahead. So okay, but my, so my question is that was you? knocking on my chamber door in in my shower he said he's visited you and he goes and don't worry i didn't look but he said he's visited you a couple of times you also <laughs> had a dream that's that's true no no i i was aware of more than one one uh knock on the door and the first time it happened i went you know talk to luana the second time it happened i remembered oh that's right um you know i i said we talked all right so uh, bob i'm going to ask you some questions and jennifer may figure out who you are from the questions but so will the audience um, you passed away pretty recently, and you had an accident uh, that caused your death. And if you can talk about it, like what happened? Okay, I have to get rid of something. Hold on. Give me a second. He's so funny. He's like, calm down. He just keeps saying how stupid it was. Um, Do you want to just give uh, Jennifer like a visual? Well, that's a, was it a, was it something like I know it wasn't a horse or falling off a horse. What what? Like okay, like falling off a horse. Yeah, falling. Falling, falling is correct. Yeah, I know, but they could have it could have also meant like a falling off of a you know the wagon or something like that. They could have been showing me that. Okay, I, you know, I'm, I'm aware that I'm from, from what I understand, I don't think uh, alcohol or drugs was, was. No, no, that wasn't the reason why. His, his, but I feel like that was something in the past with him. So, but let's be clear, it was a silly way to go. Totally silly. He's like, it's so stupid. It had that's... something to do with falling. Yes. Correct. Okay, those two things are accurate. Okay. I want to ask you about your wife, uh, Kelly. I don't know Kelly, um, but a lot of people are big fans of hers and uh, without getting too into the weeds. Anything for your wife? You're so funny. Um, <laughs> she still hears my voice. There's something with music or singing. Like it, and I'm not saying that he does. She, I don't know if she... No, no, I get it. She still hears his voice. Yeah. Um, and and sometimes, let me clarify, Bob, what you're saying is sometimes a song will come on and you'll like right. tap on the shoulder. Yeah. And you, I, I don't it know. It happens more than, more than what she gives him credit for. Okay. And is there, uh, is there any particular song that you guys shared? And I don't know the answer. Yeah, to this. Their wedding song. There was obviously. Their wedding song. Okay. That, she'll know what that is. Okay. Um, we'll know her. And he says that she smells him. Like she can smell like every once in a while. I don't know if he, it's like if somebody smoked. So I don't know if that's something, I don't think he did, but it's. Um, might be cologne, might be. Any it might be. He said though, the reason why he showed me that, or it could, it could be a cigar, not smoking, but like a cigar or something. Okay. Like All right. So I'm going to, now I'm going to go into our little, our second phase, which is great. You've clarified for me that you're the right Bob. Um, but I want to know who greeted you when you crossed over, Bob. My dad. Your dad. Okay. And was that a happy reunion or disconcerting or or what? Yeah, he left. There's something about 76. I'm not sure. Um, he says, I left too soon. I'm like, did your dad leave too soon? He's like, no. I <laughs> you left too soon. He goes, I That's left right. too soon. Do you want to tell Jennifer how old you were when you passed away? Roughly? I want to say 67. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. All right. So how is this? Uh, so what's this like? For you? I still don't know who this is. Which is that's, that's, very, that's why we do this, Jennifer. Because people, you know, they think we're making it all up. So I, I want you to tell us what it's like for you to talk to us. What's this like? I mean, you know. He said, we, he said challenging. He's showing me. Going like this, and he said, <laughs> "Like he thick. said, he's new, he's new to this, so he doesn't want to get too." So they're holding him back. That's interesting because I always remember. Ah, interesting. So when 
when there's newbies over on the other side, I call them newbies. They have no sense of boundaries. And so he's showing me them like holding him back. <laughs> and so like, yeah. He, like, cause he wants to fly and tell right. you everything that, yeah. Like I would be Peter Pan if I could. <laughs> um, Is that what he said? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Peter yeah. Pan, I love that. And then uh, go ahead. Yes. So what, so what it's like, it, what I'm Bobby. Or is probably, it probably, probably, yeah, probably, probably his close friends. Or Robert or Bobby. Say like Bobby. Just call me Bobby. Um, hold on one second. He said it was fantastic, surreal. Um, what? Crossing over. Yes. Almost like innovation and in moving, like something that's showing again. <laughs> He's so funny. There were there's words that I just mindless. <laughs> Mindless. Okay. Mindless. I'm like, what? He goes, it's how amazing. You just go, you just put your Boom. mind. Oh, Boom. you don't have to think it. It happens. So who were you surprised to see over there? If you have been. My dogs. My animals. Oh, wow. Okay. And are these dogs from recent? Did he have, did he have horses? Can I ask you that? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's possible. His wife usually would be a wife that might be into that. I don't know. Did you have horses, Bob? Or did you like riding horses? As a kid. As a kid, was was your fall related to a fall that you had coming off a horse and it was kind of like waiting to come back and bite you in the ass? You can say that. Hold on. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have a question about your dogs. Okay. You, you used to, in part of your in part of your work, you used to refer to one of your dogs. And, and a particular thing that dog used to do with you. And it was one of your dogs that showed up. One of the dogs used to do that thing with you? Yes. <laughs> Trust me. Jennifer doesn't know what I'm talking about, but anybody who... He showed me, he showed me licking his ass. I have no idea. Oh, no. my God. That's it. What? That is it. That is yeah. it. No, I'm not shutting up. He, he wrote a song about his dog licking his begins with a B and ends in an S. And, and there's two L's in there. And that's his song. And if you look the, the guy up, and I, I'll tell you at the end who this guy was. But that is his this is, me. this is hilarious. That is I'm hilarious, not, Jennifer. I'm with him saying, I'm not saying that. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> so like, okay. Dog, licking an ass. Any, anybody in your field or profession that you've run into over there? Paxton. Wow. But Billy. Billy, but that's did he tell you about our, did he tell you about our class or and Luana did. Luana did. But he how did you find I, Luana, by the way. I know I said to you find Luana, but how'd you find her? Through Prince. Through maybe. Prince. Okay. Everybody oh, knows Prince. Maybe David Bowie. Maybe Oh, maybe that's why David showed up. I understand. Hold on. I can't get the dog out of my head. Just stop. <laughs> Don't worry about that. It was, it was. Give me a second. I know, I know. Hold on. Oh, he's showing me how calm Luana made him feel. That's great. It's about everything in general. And the fact that we're learning over here, how to communicate to people over here that don't think that they can. And then. Okay, yeah. um, so I want to ask you a question about communication. Bob, and it's a, and it's in line with what we're talking about. You have a friend named John, and John uh, had a dream about you. And in the dream, it was a little similar to what dream that Jennifer had. But in the dream, you said to him, and he said, like he he didn't think you realized you had passed away. Right. And he said, but you're not here. You're not alive. And and or he said, I know, or you're alive. One of the two, but. But Bob said, I know, I know. Now, was that an accurate dream? Was that you talking to him directly? That was me, yeah. Now, yeah. do you want to put in Jennifer's mind who that John was? She he said he was really no. proud of it. He said he was really proud of it. Really? Because he talked about it publicly. Okay. I That's still don't know. All right. But, but what does John do for a living? Maybe you can put that in her mind. Just show, show him. Is he a talk show? person or like a he does appear on stage and usually he's carrying something a guitar there you go i know but legend by the way no but by the way a day Bob Dylan no 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 
Okay. No, this is not right. Bob's on the planet. No, this is Bob, another Bob, <laughs> another profession. But his friend, who is not in the same profession, his friend John is a musician. He's a guitar player. He's yeah. not in the same profession, but they were best friends and very distraught over his passing. Oh, by the way, you want to show Jennifer what John did for you and your family? Because after you had passed, he did something. He he helped transport you back home. Do you want to show her that? I'm still in shock. Just give me a second. Did they, I mean, he. I mean, didn't they fly him home? Yes, that's right. But a private jet. Yeah. And John sent a private jet to fly him home. And is this John Mellican? Who's the John? It's a, somebody else. I'll tell you at the end, dear. You have to, just like the audience, you have to wait for it. All right, so Bob, back to you. More people that are in your profession that you've run into on the flip side. Not musicians, I'll give you that. Okay, okay but is he a director? Because he kept no. no, okay. So, or is oh, he, he might have directed some stuff. He, I don't know, Bob, you can movie? tell me. Did he deal with movies? Did he write? Uh, the reason why I'm saying that well, is... He, I was shown movies, and so he's I okay. He's in the entertainment field, yes, movies, but okay, he's, more, an actor, right? he, he's an actor, more televisiony, okay. but more specific field of acting that people that we've interviewed would likely stop by to see him. And right. So, so, like, so he's an improv or a comedy. Obviously, comedy. Very good. Comedy stand. Like, sta Go ahead. He's talking about somebody licking his ass like a dog licking. <laughs> stand up comedy, correct. Now, is that have you run into any stand up people on the flip side? Because we've entered a few, interviewed a few. Oh, so he, wait. He was the one that passed away in the hotel in Florida, correct? Is that correct? Him? That's him. But you don't still don't know his name. No, it's okay. But, but has any are, have any stand up guys come by to see you? Oh, Bob Saget, correct? Saget, yes, Bob Saget. There you go, Bob. Is that correct? You want to give Jennifer a high five for finally remembering your your, your name? He didn't show me his face. That's the thing. Like, I ah, okay. Let's we'll show it to her now. He show showed. Her. He just did. He just went like this to my shoulders. That's the thing. So that they, they were trying. That's so funny. Um, he doesn't take offense to it. You know, um, I got to say this, Bob, your friends, they, they did. A so love. And I, so John, so, so the John, John is, Mayer, John me, Mayer. I had yeah. John Mayer pictured in my head this whole time. But I you didn't know, know, you couldn't think of his name, but they did a special on Netflix and uh, your friend uh, Ross was there and John Mayer was there. And uh, Jim oh, Carrey. He, he's do so you have anything you want to say to Jim Carrey? Jim Carrey is, he refers to you in present tense. As your some of your close friends do. Well, he says he I could count on Jim to listen to me. Okay. And so what have you said to Jim? So, you know, what what can let's <laughs> let's give the audience it doesn't matter. Say whatever it is. Yeah, Don't he's, it. he's so funny. He goes, get off the couch. <laughs> get off the couch. Now you don't know this, but in the video, he was on a couch the whole time. What? He, and yeah, Jim uh, Jim Carrey was on this couch the whole time. And somebody, uh, Chris Rock, actually said, oh, my God, Bob had to die to get you off your damn couch. Oh, my God. I didn't know that. I've not watched this. You know <laughs> I haven't. I know you haven't. So but that's what you want to tell Jim Carrey. Get off the damn couch. And what do you mean? Get off and do Start it. Start running. Stand up? Start running. You've got this. Start running. Start running. What does he mean? I don't know. Hold on. Start running into what you most desire. Ah, uh, running to the thing that you most desire. What is that? Stop avoiding the public or what anybody else thinks. He said, he's just showing me, you're, like, I'm interchangeable to, with Jim Carrey, like, in, meaning with this work. Yeah. And, and, so Jim hears him clearly. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, and so what? Uh, so Bob, let me clarify. Are you saying that Jim should? Bob, this is so amazing. Should you clarify, please? Would you, you're saying to Jim Carrey, open yourself up to talk to people about the fact that you can talk to the flip side? Is that correct? Or do you mean just get off your couch and do more comedy and be funny and let it all go and not worry? You showed me the other guy that Jim Carrey basically channeled. 
that was that Andy I Andy Kaufman. Oh, uh, the guy that okay, he played this person. Is he on the planet? No, the guy died. That he, okay, he was, and I think. Okay. Oh, they're all coming in. Hold on. It's funny. After these sessions, I then remember who it is. But anyway, oh, it is. He played him in a movie, but they showed how he was. How he Andy was, Kaufman. Probably. I don't yes. Know. And Jim Carrey and I mm -hmm. had like an hour long conversation about Andy Kaufman in a bar in Hollywood where we talked about the spiritual aspect of that role. And we talked about Jim because he died of cancer. Andy Kaufman died of cancer. And so we were talking about his spirit. Anyway, so what you're saying is that they should channel more people. Channel more people. Okay. Look, that's always a hard thing to say to somebody. But he's already doing it. He's already doing it. Doing it. So All right. So I'm, here's here's the message from Bob Saget to you, Jim Carrey, which is to say, don't be shy about. I love you. And you don't have to tell anybody. And he's saying, I love you. He says, first and foremost, thank you. I love you. Thank you for talking to me, buddy. <laughs> Run into whatever storm you pick to find entertaining. He showed me like this huge lightning storm. Run into the light. I like that. Beautiful. And for his wife, Kelly, I, I know you guys are very close and, and everybody misses you madly. So yeah, she's grieving so much that it's challenging for her, but he's, how can, what's a sign that you can give her like a butterfly or a hummingbird or. Yeah, those signs are boring. For well, give her something fun. What would it be a fun thing that you can do? That Laughter. He just showed me like laughter. Okay. I've never even heard of that as a sign, but that's amazing. Hold laughter. On. Well, she appears in the special on Netflix yeah. and she tells jokes and it's funny. And, you know, so. He's channeling him. He got yeah. most of his jokes from her. <laughs> okay. Very good. Yeah. Now, only she would know that that's true. You see? Yeah. Only she would know. So that's a wonderful way to put it. To write jokes together. Uh, and, and you did, you have, uh, I'm, you know, I, I don't want to neglect anybody. You have three kids, buddy. Is there anything you want to say to your kids or your, or your siblings? Like a brother and a sister, I think. He just, he just showed me like, you know, full house. He just kissed everybody on their forehead and just says, I love you. I love you. I love you. I oh, love that's you. sweet. That's um, sweet. And I know your dad passed away in 2007. He says it's not over. It's not over. It's not over. It, we're just existing in different time zones. Okay. And, and for the people who are tuning in who are like completely offended by the fact that we're talking about Bob Saget, that he was able to tell the joke from the flip side, um, what's a way that his family, without us, can access you? What would be a simple one, two, three to give them that access? Make a joke and I'll be there. Make a joke and I'll be there. Beautiful. Like, ask me to make help you make a joke. Ask me to help <laughs> you. <laughs> that's yes. what I love to do. That's a per like that's purpose. That's mm -hmm. fun. Ask me, you know, when you're sad to cheer you up. I'll do it. How about a message for your buddy John Mayer? There's not enough time for words. But you'll be showing up in his dreams, I guess. If you've already done it, so that means he's open. He talks to me all the time, but he's just mad that I'm gone. Well, you're not gone, are you, Bob? No. <laughs> you're just in another time zone and in another theater. Right. Not this theater. He goes, it's magnificent. It's a huge arena with lots of arenas around it. So let me, let's just uh, talk about I know I don't have, we got to go. All right. So, Bob, I just want to thank you so much for showing up. Um, that was so crazy. That and was I crazy. Because they held him back. That's what they showed me, but I didn't get it because I couldn't didn't see his face yeah. either. And then the second I did, he just came and just gave me, you know, just said, relax. And it was just so sweet. But I did not have any idea who you were talking about. That's great. And for the audience tuning in, this is how Jennifer and I work together. We know that there's an afterlife and we know that there's a flip side. And we know you have loved ones on the flip side who can help guide you like Luana, guide you to talk to your loved ones. So let's, and we just had a Father's Day. So let's, thanks to all the fathers out there, your father, Jim, my father, Charlie, 
Thank you guys all, and we will catch you in two weeks. Or next week, my birthday. Or next week from my birthday week. We'll from Bonaire. Oh, that's right, your birthday. Oh my God. Well, we love you. Yeah, I'm so young. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. This has been Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. For more information, jennifershafer.com, martinizone.com, or richmartini.com. Hacking the Afterlife documentary is available on Gaia.com via Amazon Prime.